here's the ultimate tutorial for crafting your own snug and stylish skater crochet top. Picture this, a fit that hugs your calves in all the right places, accentuating those lovely lady lumps, then flowing effortlessly into an airline design for that perfect flatty flare. And let's not forget the lace detailing at the back, adding a touch of elegance to your ensemble. So grab your hooks and let's get crocheting because with this tutorial, you'll be skating in style in no time. Now let's crochet and cut see our way to fabulousness. For this tutorial, you'll need medium weight yarn, scissors, dani needle, 3mm crochet hook, and though optional, elastic thread. Begin by making a slip knot, so grab your yarn and wrap it around your finger twice. Then take the first loop and place it over the second loop. Then take the second loop and place it over the original first loop. You may notice a knot starting to develop. Pull on all the yarn ends to tighten it securely. Next, take your crochet hook and insert it into the slip knot. Then gently pull the short end of the yarn tail to tighten it securely. Next, we are going to prepare for a row of foundationless half double crochet, but first we chain three. Yarn over, that is, bring the yarn from the back to the front of the crochet hook and pull it through the slip knot. Once again, yarn over, bring the yarn from the back to the front of the crochet hook and pull it through the loop. Once more, yarn over, bring the yarn from the back to the front of the crochet hook and pull it through the loop on your hook. So we have three chains. We are going to work on that first chain. Yarn over once and insert your crochet hook in the first chain that we made. Then pull the yarn through the chain and when you pull up, you should have three loops on your crochet hook. Yarn over once and pull the yarn through the first loop only. When you pull up, you should have three loops. Yarn over once again and pull through all the three loops. So this is our first foundationless half double crochet. It's like we're making a half double crochet and a foundation chain at the same time. And this is what makes this stitch great. It saves time. We'll be working on this stitch over here. Yarn over once and insert your crochet hook in that stitch on the side and go in all the loops, all the loops on top of the stitch. They should form a V on your crochet hook. Then pull the yarn through the stitch and when you pull up, you should have three loops on your crochet hook. Yarn over once and pull through the first loop only. And then you should have three loops on your hook. Yarn over and pull through all the three loops on your hook. Once again, yarn over and insert your crochet hook in that stitch on the side. Go through all the loops. Pull the yarn through the stitch. And when you pull up, you should have three loops. Yarn over once and pull through the first loop only. Then, when you pull up, you should have three loops. Yarn over and pull through all the three loops on your hook. Continue crocheting foundationless half double crochets until you reach your desired length, which should extend from the top of your chest, where the top typically starts, to just under your bust. For example, if your preferred length is 6 inches, aim to crochet until the piece reaches that measurement. Adjust the length to fit your body proportions accordingly. My preferred length is 6 inches, though I added approximately an inch, now it's 6.8 inches, to compensate for the yarn shrinking during crocheting. Following chain two and the two chains will serve as our turning chain. It doesn't count as a stitch, it just serves as the turning chain. We are going to prepare for a half double crochet 
in the third loop of the first stitch. In a stitch, normally we usually work into the top loops of the stitch and there's usually the front and the back loop. We either go into both of the loops or the back loop. These are the top loops and it has the back and the front loop. So that's the back loop and that's the front loop. Instead, we will insert our hook under the back hump of the stitch. The back hump is the horizontal bar located at the back of the stitch, just below the top loop. It's called the back hump or the third loop. So the chains of two don't serve as the first stitch. Let's prepare for half double crochet in the back hump of the first stitch. Yarn over once and insert your crochet hook in the third loop of the first stitch. Pull the yarn through the stitch and pull up. You should have three loops on your crochet hook. Yarn over once again and pull through all the three loops. In the next stitch, we're going to prepare for a half double crochet in the third loop. So yarn over once and insert your crochet hook in the third loop. Then pull the yarn through the stitch and pull up. You should have three loops. Yarn over once again and pull through all the three loops. Following in the next stitch, let's prepare for a half double crochet in the third loop of that stitch. So yarn over once and insert your crochet hook in the third loop or the back hump of the stitch. Pull the yarn through the stitch. Pull up. You should have three loops. Yarn over and pull through all the three loops. In the next stitch, prepare for a half double crochet in the back hump of the stitch. Yarn over once. Insert your crochet hook in the third loop. Pull the yarn through the stitch. Pull up. You should have three loops. Yarn over and pull through all the three loops. This stitch produces a raised knit like ribbon effect on one side of the fabric. We've shifted the top loops, resulting in a braided effect. So continue working one half double crochet in each stitch, focusing on the third loop until you reach the end of the row, and I'll catch up with you here. I'm at the end of the row. And I have one stitch. This right here are the chains of three that we made at the beginning. Here's the last half double crochet. So we've been working on the third loop of each stitch. But for the stitches at the end of the row, I'd prefer we don't go into the third loop. But depending on the stitch, this one I want to go through the front loop because... I suspect that going through the third loop is what is causing my work to curl. You'll see what I mean. So I'm completing my last half double crochet. Here is a visual representation of our work so far. So this is the back and it's flat. And this is our right side and it has the ribbon effect. To begin the next row, we are going to chain two and the chains of Two will count as the turning chain only. It won't serve as the first stitch. It will just count as the turning chain. So after we've made the chains of two, turn your work. It's crucial to keep in mind that we need to push the top loops, these ones, to the right side of our work. This row will be a little different and a little complicated. So this is the third loop of the first stitch but if we work on that third loop we are going to have the ribbon effect on the wrong side instead of the right side so this is the back hump of that stitch right and if we work on that stitch on that back hump of that stitch the top loops are going to be on the wrong side on this side and we've already made the ribbon effect on the other side so we're going to be still working on the back hump but if you take a look at your stitch you will see the third loop behind it yarn over once and insert your crochet hook in that horizontal bar behind the stitch 
pull the yarn through the stitch pull up and you should have three loops yarn over and pull through all the three loops you can observe that it's pushed the top loops on the right side we want the ribbon on the right side yarn over once and insert your crochet hook in the third loop of the next stitch and then pull the yarn through the stitch and yarn over once again and pull through all the three loops in the next stitch prepare for half double crochet in the third loop yarn over once insert your crochet hook in the third loop of the horizontal bar pull the yarn through the stitch yarn over pull through the three loops work one half double crochet in each stitch focusing on the third loop until you reach the end of this row and i'll catch up with you here i'm at the end of the row and i have one stitch left normally at the last stitch i'd still continue working in the third loop of that stitch but i realized my work was curling at the edges and i suspect it's because i had been working a half double crochet in the back hump of the last stitch for my last stitch i'm going to prepare for a back loop half double crochet instead of a half double crochet in the third loop so i'm going to yarn over once and insert my crochet hook in the back loop of the last stitch and complete my half double crochet you can observe that the ribbon effect or the braided effect is on one side the right side to begin the next row chain two and the chains of two count as our turning chain and it doesn't serve as the first stitch prepare for a half double crochet in the third loop of the first stitch this time we'll work on it directly yarn over once and insert your crochet hook in the third loop and complete your half double crochet in the next stitch make a half double crochet focusing on the third loop work one half double crochet in each stitch focusing on the third loop until you reach the end of the row and i'll catch up with you there i'm at the end of the row and i have one stitch left normally i would still work on the third loop of the last stitch but i'm going to work on the front loop of the last stitch so that perhaps it doesn't curl at the edges to begin the next row chain two and the chains of two serve as the turning chain and it doesn't count for the first stitch so this is that we had row that we are going to do and we are going to insert our crochet hook in the third loop from the wrong side of the work from behind so insert your crochet hook in the third loop and complete your half double crochet in the next stitch prepare for a half double crochet in the third loop insert your crochet hook in the horizontal bar and complete your half double crochet work one half double crochet in each stitch focusing on the third loop until you reach the end of the row and i'll catch up with you there i'm at the end of the row and i have one stitch left this time i'm going to make a half double crochet in the back loop so insert your crochet hook in the back loop and complete your half double crochet continue following this pattern until when wrapped around your chest and stretched it encircles with a gap of five to six inches in the center of the back I've completed my rows guys you can see my work is curling inwards at the edges and it's so annoying it's so annoying to be honest I don't know why it's curling inwards but I suspect it's it's my tension my tension was too tight if you're following along I hope your tension isn't tight and you did what I suggested in the video and if you did this stitch and it didn't curl inwards at the edges please comment what you did i'll appreciate you can see i've wrapped the top around my chest and this space in the middle stretch it as far as possible you have to make sure there's that space i'm actually going to remove a few rows because i'm going to add two rows which have loops where we are going to put the straps you have to make sure that this space about five to six inches in between so that 
it can fit properly in between here make sure this space of about five to six inches stretch it as much as possible and make sure there's enough space stretch stretch it remember my work was 6.8 inches when i started hey it's shrunk it's shrunk to 5.2 inches i knew my work would shrink but i thought it would shrink to six inches but it's shrunk to 5.2 inches lucky for you you know that you should add 1.6 inches to account for the yarn shrinkage now we are going to prepare for the loop design where the back straps will be inserted chain two the chains of two only count as the turning chain turn your work and prepare for a double crochet in the first stitch so in the first stitch prepare for a double crochet yarn over once insert your hook in the first stitch pull the yarn through the stitch pull up you should have three loops yarn over and pull through the first two loops yarn over and pull through the remaining two loops chain two and skip two stitches then prepare for a double crochet in the third stitch yarn over once insert your hook in the stitch pull the yarn through the stitch you should have three loops yarn over pull through the first two loops yarn over pull through the remaining two loops chain two and skip two stitches then prepare for a double crochet in the third stitch chain two and skip two stitches then prepare for a double crochet in the third stitch repeat until the end of the row and i'll catch up with you right here i'm at the end of the row and i've already chained two i'm preparing for my last stitch for this row chain one and turn your work prepare for a single crochet on top of the double crochet from the previous row insert your crochet hook in the stitch and pull the yarn through the stitch yarn over and pull through the two loops in the chain two space prepare for two single crochets on top of the double crochet from the previous row make a single crochet in the chain two space make two single crochets on top of the double crochet from the previous row make a single crochet repeat the pattern until the end of the row and i'll catch up with you right here i'm at the end of the row and i have one stitch left i'm preparing for my last stitch which is a single crochet we are now going to clean up the border to begin chain one and prepare for a single crochet in that um single crochet space one single crochet in the double crochet space prepare for two single crochets that's my first one and that's my second single crochet in the first half double crochet space the first row prepare for one single crochet in the next half double crochet space for the next row prepare for two single crochets that's my first one go into the space again and make another single crochet in the next half double crochet space for the next row prepare for one single crochet in the next half double crochet space for the next row prepare for two single crochets in the next half double crochet space for the next row prepare for one single crochet continue alternating between one single crochet in one row and two single crochets in the next row until the end of this row and i'll catch up with you right here i'm at the end and now we're going to make the the loops the loop design for this side as well so chain two and in the first stitch make a double crochet just like we did on the other side chain two and skip two stitches then in the third stitch 
Prepare for a double crochet. Chain 2, skip 2 stitches and in the third stitch prepare for a double crochet. Repeat until the end of this row and I'll catch up with you right here. Chain 1 and turn your work. On top of the double crochet from the previous row, make a single crochet. And then in the chain 2 space, prepare for 2 single crochets. Continue with the pattern until the end of the row and I'll catch up with you right here. Chain 1 and cut off your yarn. Create a slip knot and insert your crochet hook into the project. I'm going to make 20 chains. When stretched, the 20 chains measure about 5.5 inches. Join to the other side with a single crochet. Prepare for two single crochets in the double crochet space. Then we are going to alternate between one single crochet in the half double crochet space of one row and then in the next row place two single crochets in that half double crochet space. Keep repeating the pattern in all the half double crochet rows. And I'll catch up with you right here. When we arrive at the chains section, we begin a new row. So prepare for a double crochet in the first chain. And then we are going to put a stitch marker. Then we chain one. And in the same chain, add another double crochet. Then chain one. And in the same chain, add another double crochet. Skip one chain and then in the next chain, prepare for a double crochet. Then chain one. And in the same chain, Prepare for a double crochet and then chain one and in the same chain make another double crochet. Skip the next chain and then in the one after that chain prepare for a double crochet. Following chain one and in the same chain add another double crochet. Then chain one. And in the same chain, add another double crochet. This pattern is going to increase the number of stitches. Continue with this pattern until the end of the chains and I'll catch up with you here. I'm here and I'm still going to repeat what I did on the chains. I've skipped a stitch and I'm going into the next stitch after that and making a double crochet. Chain one and in the same stitch, make another double crochet chain one and in the same stitch make another double crochet. Skip next stitch and in the one after that prepare for a double crochet. Following chain one in the same stitch prepare for another double crochet. Chain one and in the same stitch make another double crochet. I don't know if you can notice but I'm working on the wrong side of the top which shouldn't be the case. You can see that my I'm making the frills and the flat side of the top is facing me which is the wrong side. I hope you turned your work <laughs> so that you make sure the right side of the bust section and the right side of the frills are matching. 
you'll continue with the same pattern until the end of this row and I'll meet you right here. Make a slip stitch in the chain one space. Chain four and the first three chains will serve as a double crochet. Then the fourth chain will serve as a chain one space. Make a double crochet in the seam space. In the next V stitch, armor the chain one space. Make one double crochet and then chain one and make another double crochet. Yeah, just like that. This time we are not increasing, we are making one V stitch on top of the V stitch from the previous round. In the next V stitch or chain one space, prepare for a double crochet. And then we are going to chain one and in the same space, prepare for another double crochet. Continue with the pattern until the end of this round and I'll catch up with you here. I'm here and I'm going to close this round by making a slip stitch in the third chain. To begin the next round, slip stitch in the chain one space, insert your crochet hook in the chain one space and then pull the yarn through the space and the loop on your hook, chain four and make a double crochet in the same space. In the next V stitch or chain one space, prepare for a double crochet, then chain one and add another double crochet in the same space. We are making V stitches on top of the V stitches from the previous round. In the next V stitch, prepare for a double crochet, chain one and add another double crochet in the same space. Continue following the pattern until the top reaches your preferred length. For the frill part, I have 16 rounds in total. Slip stitch in the chain one space. Chain three, and the chains of three serve as a double crochet. Then add three more double crochets in the same space. We are now going to make a picot chain three. That's my first chain, my second chain, and my third chain. Then we are going to insert our crochet hook after the chain three. Insert your crochet hook on those two loops. They look like an inverted V. Insert your crochet hook on those two loops. Pull the yarn through the loops and the loop on your crochet hook. Following in the same space, add four more double crochets. In the next V stitch, make a single crochet. In the following V stitch, prepare for four double crochets in the same space. That's my first double crochet, 
go into the space again and make another double crochet that's my second one go into the space again and make another double crochet that's my third and go into the space again and make your fourth double crochet now we're going to make a picot i've already chained one so i'm going to chain two more so that i have three chains and then i'm going to insert my crochet hook on the double crochet on the loops that look like an inverted v insert your crochet hook pull the yarn through the loops and the loop on your crochet hook following in the same space add four more double crochets In the next V stitch, make a single crochet. In the next V stitch, make four double crochets. That's my first, that's my second double crochet, my third double crochet, my fourth double crochet. Then make a picot stitch. And after you've made your picot, you're going to add four more double crochets in the same space. In the next V stitch, make a single crochet. Repeat the pattern until you reach the end of this round, and I'm going to catch up with you right here. To close the round, slip stitch in the third chain. Chain one and snip off your yarn. Wear your top and place stitch markers where you'd like your straps to go. Remove the stitch marker, insert your crochet hook and tie a knot. I'm going to chain 250, but chain however many stitches you prefer. Prepare for a slip stitch in the second chain from the hook. Insert your crochet hook in the chain. Pull the yarn through the chain and the loop on your crochet hook. In the next chain, make a slip stitch. Make one slip stitch in each chain that you've made and I'll catch up with you here. Slip stitch in the next two stitches on the top. Chain one and snip off your yarn. Repeat the same process for the other strap. This step is optional and the top is fine the way it is right now. But if you want to go extra and make that waist snatched, I suggest you use an elastic thread. I'm working on the wrong side and this is me securing the elastic thread. You see how after the end of your project, you hide the excess yarn with a darning needle. That's exactly the same process that we're going to do when sewing the elastic thread. If you sew the elastic thread on the wrong side and then you turn your work, you won't see the elastic thread on the right side. I'm going to sew the elastic thread only on the single crochet row. But in this open part, because we didn't make single crochets, I'm going to sew it on the V-stitches. If you got your measurements right, this step is optional. But it won't be as snatched as when you put the elastic thread. In case you made your work bigger, this step can save you. And if you don't have elastic thread, you can make chains however many chains that can go around your waist and then sew the sew that foundation chain on the 
on the waist area where you did the single crochets. By the remember when I was making the top, the bust area, the edges were curling inside. But what saved me is that the top is open at the back. Because it's open, when I'm putting the straps at the back, it stretches it. And that's what saved me. But if the back wasn't open, the, the way the top was curling inside, it would have been obvious when I'm wearing the top. I've turned my work to the right side and you can observe that you can't see the elastic thread. Look at how it... That waist. 